How many Pokemon can you avoid seeing in Pokemon Pearl? With the release of the remakes, I thought it would be an excellent opportunity to revisit the original versions to complete a Reverse Oak challenge. If you've not seen the previous two videos in the series, basically our challenge is to see the least number of Pokemon by the end of the game. But this will also increase the difficulty as we'll have less experience and money from skipping optional trainers and only being able to use Pokemon we've already seen or can guarantee we will encounter during the run. So what are the rules? We have to avoid registering as many Pokemon as we can by the end of the game. Only Pokemon that are registered in the Pokedex count, so seeing them in the overworld won't affect our total. We can reset the game if I accidentally trigger a trainer or wild battle that isn't mandatory. Otherwise, a perfect run could be messed up by encountering a wild bid do for the start of the run. Other than that, we play the game as normal. I'm recording this section before I start the challenge, and let me tell you, they take forever and a day to complete. So, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like. Unlike the previous Reverse Oak challenge, it doesn't matter which starter we choose, as between our rival, Dawn and Mandatory Trainers, we'll see all three starters and their evolved forms. But to play it safe, I choose Pitbull, as its evolved form can learn 7 of the 8 HMs. With our starter in hand, we have our first mandatory battle against a wild Starly. Our first task is to meet up with the professor who hands us his Pokedex, which isn't going to get filled up, unlike our rival's mum. Jeez, he's a bit glum, I don't think that joke went down too well with good old Professor Rowan. After returning to Twinleaf Town, we can proceed north, where Dawn prevents us from proceeding. Turns out we need to do the catch tutorial, but surprisingly, neither here Chimchar or the Wild Badoof are added to our Pokedex. There are plenty of mandatory trainers on this route, so before we hit Jubilife City, we encounter Shinx and... Badoof. Great. The next mandatory trainer is Barry. Sorry, I meant Rab. <laughs> so we finally get to see one of the other starters, Turtwig, but we lose the battle. Unable to progress, we head back to the previous route to level up our Mons. For a first in our challenge videos, we don't need to worry about encountering any new Mons, as Krikatos has a 0% encounter rate during the day. While here, we add Shinx to our team and a shiny Starly! Another first in our challenge videos! The odds of encountering a shiny in this game are 1 in 8192, so of course we add it to our team. With our new Mons, we beat Barry and resume our journey, but it's not until the Orberg Gym that we increase our total. We can avoid the trainers on Route 203 and in the gate by walking around them, and in the mine, trainers only battle you if you speak to them. You can also skip the two trainers in the gym. The first trainer uses Geodude and the second uses Geodude and Onyx. Gym leader Roark also uses these mons, so there's no harm in countering them early for the experience of money. His final Pokemon is Craniodos, and thanks to Piplup's bubble, it's an easy battle. So we wrap up the first gym with 8 mons on the counter, or 5.3% of the Sinnoh Pokedex. Time to head north of Jubilife City, where the Team Galactic Grunts are causing mischief. We're forced to defend Rowan's honour in a double battle, from which we add 3 mons to our total. Zubat, Wurmpole, and Chimchar. Great, thanks Rowan. Once again, between spinners, roamers and grassy areas, Route 204 has no mandatory trainers, so we arrive in Flamora Town to deal with Team Galactic. In the town's forest, we have to deal with two grunts and add Silcoon. With the Windworks key, we take on the Team Galactic member protecting the building, who uses Glameow. And inside, the first grunt uses Cascoon. The lack of experience from battling all the trainers in the game finally catches up to us as we hit a brick wall against Commander Marty's Perugly. It's only two levels higher than my Mons, but we don't live long enough to put a dent in its HP as it hits hard. Grinding outside the Windworks isn't an option as we constantly encounter Mons we haven't seen yet and are forced to reset the game. So we set off for grinding against the Bidoofs on Route 204. They're a low level, so it takes a while to get a few extra levels, which I don't think makes a difference anyway, as on our winning attempt we just spam double team. Anyone would think this is one of my solo challenge videos. Progressing along Route 205, we skip all 11 trainers and their 6 currently unseen Pokemon. We arrive in a turn of forest where we're greeted by Cheryl, who I'm going to blame for what happens next. Making our way through the forest, we come across two trainers who we can't get around as we don't have HM cut. And as it's a double battle, it means we see our companion's partner, Chansey, as well as the trainer's Pokemon, Pachirisu and Beautifly. And just around the corner, we're given no choice but to battle the two psychics and their Abra. The remainder of the forest is quite open and has branching paths, allowing us to avoid the remaining two double battles. Our next stop is the Eterna Gym, where Gardenia refuses to show herself until you've bested all the gym trainers. So we add Cherubi, Rosilia and Budu. The gym leader's first two mons we've already seen, but her final Pokemon, Roserade, wrecks our team as we're still under level. But as she starts with a Cherubi, it allows her to set up double team once again, but even then it's a close battle. You might be wondering why I've not evolved my team yet. The simple answer is I'm not sure if I am going to see their evolved forms in this run, so better to be safe than sorry. Just outside the galactic base, Cynthia appears to gift us HM Cut and asks if you've left a like on this video yet. It's a great opportunity to help us reach new people and get some of that sweet, sweet YouTube watch time. Okay, okay, I'll cut it out. What? I'm having a champion of a time. Okay, moving on. 
in the galactic base there are plenty of trainers and just like all villainous pokemon teams they use a lot of the same pokemon so after battling six grunts we only increase our total by one with Kadabra. commander jupiter is up last and her skun tank hits hard once more it takes several attempts and you guessed it double team we head south along route 206 where once again you can skip every trainer which is slightly annoying as two of them has staravia starly's evolved form once we finished on the cycling path, we head east on Route 207, where, just like most routes so far, all the trainers are skippable. If you're willing to take the long way around, that is. Doing so allows us to skip five more Pokemon. We fly through Mount Coronet and Route 208. We're running so fast we bump into Hiker Jonathan, but we've already seen Onyx, so no sweat. From here, it's just a short staircase through the grass and we arrive at Hearth Home City in a challenge by Barry, adding Buizel, Ponyta and Grottle. Our next mandatory battle quickly comes around as we're forced to battle twins Emmett and Lil, so we see Bonsley and Mime Jr. With that wrapped up, we skip the remaining spinners and roamers and arrive in Salacian Town, where there's nothing to do other than heal up, so we continue north along Route 210, where once again we can avoid all trainers. Game Freak really is treating us in this challenge video. Oh yeah, there's the side up too, but they're in the overworld, so they don't count. On Route 215, we get off to a terrible start as there's no way past Ruin Maniac Calvin and his Bronzor and Shield on. The first half of the route is linear, but all the trains are optional. The second half of the path has a couple of routes you can take at various points, some of which lead to mandatory trainers, but by planning ahead we're able to make our way towards the end of the route, where we come across a double battle. The trainers seem to have stepped up their game, as Ace Trainer Dennis and Maya throw out some heavy hitters in Monferno and Gyarados, which sweep our team. After plenty of grinding on Route 210, I realise the way to beat these trainers is to simply talk to them individually. They're a lot easier to deal with in single battles. The next increase comes in the third gym where you have to battle three of the trainers. They use a combination of Machoke and Meditite, which the gym leader uses anyway. The final trainer on the left is a spinner, so we can get around them by timing our runs while solving the puzzle, so we avoid adding Machop to the counter. With the gym trainers cleared, let's see we handle leader Marlene. Like all our previous Reverse Oak Challenge videos, our team is underleveled. However, unlike our past runs, this feels like we just need a bit of luck, and we get it on this run. By going on the offensive using Aerial Ace against her first two Mons and using Growl to render Lucario's attacks harmless, we're able to win the battle. It isn't looking good though. After the third gym, we've seen 37 Pokemon, or 24.5% of the Pokedex. Yes, Team Galactic has stolen Dawn's Pokedex, which means it isn't getting filled up. At the Galactic Warehouse, we come to the rescue, and our bravery is rewarded by an increase of four, as we had Dustox, Krogunk, Stunky, and Clefairy. Thanks, Dawn. It's time to head to Pistoria City. The game design nudges you to head south from our current location through Route 214 and the Valor Lakefront. However, by flying back to Hearth Home City, we can head south there along Route 212. So, which do we pick? Both have mandatory trainers. Route 214 has one mandatory battle, which would add Ghastly and Mistrevious, whereas Route 212 has two Pokemon Rangers you're forced to battle, which would add Primplup, Apom, and Maril. Whichever way we choose increases our count by two by the end of the run, as we encounter Maril in Gym 4 anyway. So we basically have a choice whether we'd rather increase it with Ghastly and Mistrevious or Primplup and Apom. We choose the latter as it will allow us to finally evolve our starter. Gym 4 is a doddle thanks to the combined efforts of Budu and Shinx. Along the way we battle Wingle, Azuril, Shellos, and the Maril I just mentioned. Crash Awake crashes out as we dispatch his three mons with little trouble, adding Quagsire and Floatzel. So, by the end of the fourth gym we've seen 32.45% of the Pokedex. Next up we have to deal with the Team Galactic Grunt who's talking about blowing some stuff up. You know what we call people like that. That's right, the T-word. Twonk. Anyway, he legs it and we have to deal with Barry, who uses no new Pokemon, and neither does the Grunt when we finally track him down. So, our count stays at 49 all the way until the north section of Route 210. We clear the Psyducks which aren't added to the Pokedex and Cynthia gifts us the old charm. Maybe I'll use a bit of the old charm to persuade you to subscribe to my channel. I'm only a small content creator and would love your help to hit a thousand subscribers. We make our way through the grass as the fog starts to set in. Once we near the top, we're forced to travel west. We can't get around H Trainer Alyssa, but she uses Ponyton and Grottle, so there's no increase. We make it around the two trains playing Kiss Chase and make our way to the top of this flight of stairs. If you stick to the right hand side, you can avoid the eyesight, somehow, of Ace Trainer Ernest, as well as his Mothim and Luxio. The next mandatory trainer uses a Machoke, so no increase here either. However, Bird Keeper Brianna adds two new Pokemon as she refuses to look away from our path. So we add Hootoot and Noctowl. There's just one more trainer standing between us and Celestic Town, but as he's a spinner, we avoid Giraffe Rig. In this town, there's just one trainer to deal with, a Galactic Grunt and his two previously seen Mons. We pick up HM Surf and return to Hearth Home City, again. 
This time to claim the fifth gym badge. The gym puzzle is one of the simpler ones in the game and it allows you to avoid every single trainer, so long as you know which doors to take. So we avoid adding Ghastly, Haunter, Mistrevious and Drifloon. The level curve is starting to catch up with us, we're under leveled by quite a bit and so lose to gym leader Fantina and her drift blimp. We grind just west of Celestic Town as the wild mons levels are about the same as ours so it makes grinding quite easy. We also catch an Abra and evolve our Budu. So with our new mons we're able to beat Fantina's Gengar and Miss Magius. Five gyms down and we've seen 35.8% of the Pokedex. Our next destination is Canalave City to the west. It's a short journey through Route 218. Here there are two paths and a few trainers and by heading north and then west we can avoid them all. At the entrance to Canalave City, Dawn's dad pays us a visit. Oh bugger. I explained earlier on I wasn't talking about his wife, I was talking about Barry's mum. That misunderstanding out the way, he upgrades our Pokedex. Midway through the city we have a clash on the big bridge. There's a reference you haven't heard for a while. Barry is obviously upset about the mum joke and attempts to beat us down. He doesn't succeed of course, but he tried. During the battle we had Staravia and Heracross. The Steel Gym is up next and the Mansoy trainers add Steelix, Skaroopy and Azumarill? Are we sure this is the Steel Gym? Gym leader Byron, however, does use Steel Pokemon. We've already seen Bronzor and Steelix, however, Bastiodon is new, bringing us to 60 seen Pokemon, or 39.7% of the Pokedex registered by the end of the sixth gym. To progress the story, we head to the library to tell Professor Roan that the Pokedex isn't getting filled up, unlike. Oh. This is an intervention, isn't it? Fine, I'll retire the joke. For this video. Rowan, the responsible adult that he is, sends us, a young boy, to Lake Valor to deal with a cult. As always, we don't register the overworld sprites, poor magic art, and in the cave we have to deal with Commander Saturn and his three mons, the only new one being Toxicroak. Rowan also stands by and does nothing as we head to Lake Verity to save Dawn. There are two double battles and Commander Mars from earlier in the game. During the section we battle the usual galactic Pokemon like Stunky and a butt ton of Glameow. However, we do update our layout to 62 with Gold Baths. It's time to head north to the final lake. It's a short journey through Mount Coronet. Oh, bore me. So, I haven't got HM strength. After some research, I discovered that I missed it all the way back in Route 209's Lost Tower. Great, there's six trainers to battle and six new Pokemon to encounter. Or so I thought. On the third floor, a mandatory battle seems to be on the cards, until I discovered that you can time your run to get around Roughneck Kirby and his Clefit. Floor 4 is another one that seems like we'll have to battle at least one of the three trainers here. But Game Freak is the gift that keeps on giving, as by heading south and then navigating around the spinner, we can avoid all the trainers here too. With HM Strength in hand, we can use an escape rope and... What? Rowan, you old fart! Let me leave! So, we have to do that entire run again, this time in reverse. We head through the east entrance to Mount Coronet, again. This time armed with strength, with repels on, we hit Route 216 with no wild encounters. Here, we're unable to take the straight path or we'll need to battle Ace Trainer Blake in his Abbey Palm. So instead, we take the long way around using the high path and the bridge, which allows us to avoid the trainer. We skip all the other trainers here and turn north on Route 217, where we're forced to battle Ace Trainer Dalton and his three new Pokemon, Raichu, Pelepe, and the Hippo Pokemon. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Towards the end, we... What is Black Belt Loop doing? I worried how I would skip him, but turns out it doesn't matter. He doesn't have any new mons, unlike Mandatory Trainer Olivia, who had Seeking. Before we can tackle the final lake, we get lost in the forest. Yeah, I don't know Gen 4 well at all. We eventually stumble upon Snowpoint City and the 7th gym. Like Gen 2's Ice Type gym, I thought I'd be forced to battle a trainer in here, potentially adding an extra 5 to our total. But like our Pokemon Gold Reverse Oak challenge, there's no mandatory trainers in this gym if you move quick. However, I do accidentally trigger a battle and add Snowbird to our total. It's not an issue though, as the gym leader will use the Mon anyway. Speaking of the gym leader, Candice uses a level 42 of Bomber Snow, a Sneasel, and a Medicham. And wouldn't you know it, we clear the gym on our first attempt. Nice. So, with just one gym remaining, we've seen 70 Mons, or 46.4% of the Pokedex. We follow the story to the final lake, then to Veilstone City, and it's a long time before we hit 71 seen Pokemon, as all the Galactic trainers in their warehouse and Galactic HQ use the usual Mons. It's only at the end of this part of the story that we increase our total as Cyrus adds the previously unseen Murkrow. We wrap up this part of the game with a victory over Commander Saturn and then head to Mount Coronet with our recently caught Machoke who has Rock Climb. We're so underleveled that the journey through Mount Coronet is time consuming. Because the wild Pokemon are higher levels, the max repels aren't very effective. So we return to our tried and tested method of saving every few steps. Along the way I catch a Bomber Snow and Medicham. Several galactic grunts try to stop us as we reach the peak, but as usual they all use the same Pokemon we've previously seen. Eventually though, we make it to the Sky Pillar. There are a few battles that come thick and fast here. Unsurprisingly, there's no increase to our total during the battle against the final two grunts standing guard. 
Commanders Mars and Jupiter are up next. And wouldn't you know it, the only increase comes courtesy of Barry who starts with Munchlax. Thanks, dude. We have no time to grind as we're thrown straight into the next battle as Cyrus's Pokemon overwhelm our team. We managed to make it past new edition Honchkrow before Gyarados wipes our team. After some leveling up and switching up our team, we have to make the entire trip up Mount Coronet again, which means battling the commanders in a double battle once more. On the second attempt, we're able to best Cyrus and add Weevil and Crobat in the process. So we wrap up this section of the game with 76 Pokemon seen as we encounter and catch Palkia. Next up is Sunny Shore City, which we can get to through Route 212. Along the way, we have to battle a trainer who uses Feebas and Gastriodon. In the gym, we're forced to battle most of the trainers, so we had Mr. Mime, Luxio, and Barbaral. Time for the leader Voltner. Some of these mons we've already seen, but we had Ambipom, Octillery, and Luxray. So we wrap up the gym challenge having seen 55.7% of the Pokedex. Despite Route 223 being a sprawling ocean with a couple of branching paths, these often lead to dead ends, so the route is more linear than it originally seems. So we have to battle Swimmer Oscar, who uses Mantai, Remoraid, and Mantine. The remaining trainers north can all be avoided thanks to the large body of water they're in. It's time for Victory Road, and I have no doubt we'll be increasing my counter past 100 here. Up first is Ace Trainer Maria. Spin for me! Ugh. We hit 88 with Golduck, then 89 with Blissey. On the next floor, we're required to solve a small puzzle to proceed, but doing so means Ace Trainer Romar challenges us. All of his mons are previously unseen, so we had Rapidash, Carnivine, and Rampardos. Our bad luck continues as we're forced to battle the very next trainer who uses Clefable and Torterra. We continue through the cave and cross Black Belt Miles' eyesight. He sends out Machamp, and in the cave's lobby's floor, we cross Psyche, Valencia, and a Chingling, and Chime Echo. And it's not over yet as a dragon trainer adds Gabite. As we approach the end, veteran Edgar refuses to look elsewhere, so we finally jump over 100, adding Tentacruel, Golem, and sadly, Empoleon, which I thought we might be able to. To avoid. Oh, we're not done yet, as the final trainer adds Gibble. That's our biggest jump yet in a single area, with 15 new mons seen from unskippable trainers. Time for the Elite Four. Barry? No! Thanks to you, we add Staraptor and Snorlax. Our team is underleveled, but I'm curious how far we can make it in the Elite Four. Aaron is our first opponent, and during the battle we add Drapion and Vespaquin. Against Bertha, we update our total to 109 as we encounter Pseudo Wudo, Epowdon, and Wishcash. Flint is the third member of the Sinnoh Elite Four. He uses the fire Pokemon Infernape and Lapunny? And the final member of the Elite Four, Lucian, uses Girafferig, Alakazam, and Bronzong. You're probably noticing a bit of a jump in my levels, and it's because Cynthia trashed us on our first attempt. So after plenty of grinding against the Elite Four, it's time to wrap up this challenge and find out how many Pokemon you can avoid in this game. Cynthia uses new additions Spirit Tomb, Garchomp, and Meloti. So in Pokemon Pearl, you can avoid seeing only 34 Pokemon, and you're forced to register 77.5% of the Pokedex while completing the game. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then check out another one of my Pokemon videos on screen now. For my next challenge video, I'll be attempting to beat Pokemon Brilliant Diamond as a Team Galactic Grunt. Until next time, remember to flex your inner geek. See ya!